Hello, welcome to the Wednesday, September 11th, 2019 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Sevalde, Germany. Microsoft Patch Tuesday, of course, at the top of the news today. And for September, we got patches for 79 different vulnerabilities. Two of these patches have already been exploited and three had been previously disclosed. Now, as far as the exploited vulnerabilities go, one of them affects the Windows Common Log File System driver. We had some problems with this in the past. The second one, well, good old Winsock is actually affected by this. Both are approach escalation vulnerabilities. So a local attacker, after getting some access to the system, could run processes using elevated privileges. 19 of the vulnerabilities are rated as critical. Now, four of them are in the remote desktop client. These are remote code execution vulnerabilities, but don't mix them up with these blue keep vulnerabilities. This is in the client, so it does require that a victim would connect to a malicious remote desktop server. And well, while five of the critical vulnerabilities are still in the Chakra scripting engine, uh, this I think is uh, sort of low compared to other months. Renato Mourinho, who did assemble this month's summary for us, uh, picked one vulnerability that I also think is somewhat interesting, and that's a remote code execution vulnerability in how link files are being processed. CV 2019 12 80. Now, link files have been abused in the past heavily. There have been other vulnerabilities. So certainly this is something I think that's worthwhile watching. And then unlike last month, one of the critical vulnerabilities also goes to the Adobe Flash update. Actually, two individual vulnerabilities affected by this. Both are arbitrary code execution vulnerabilities. One is one of those classic use after free vulnerabilities and then a same origin method execution issue. In addition to Flash, Adobe also patched a vulnerability in the Adobe Application Manager. That's of the installer for Adobe products. And here they fixed an insecure library loading vulnerability. And then we got yet another interesting side channel attack. And now this is a little bit an artificial attack. I find not really all that practical as the authors probably make it out to be, but it relies on two different technology. The first one being data direct IO that's found in some Intel server chipsets. And the idea of this technology is to really be able to send data in 10 gigabit networks. Now, the idea the idea here is that uh, data direct IO will send data directly from the last level cache, which is a shared resource. So by being able to also access this shared resource, we may be able to collect timing information about when packets were received. The way this was exploited in the paper is that this was used to then measure the arrival time of packets during the SSH password dialog. And by measuring the time at which packets arrived, they were able to deduct passwords that a user typed in. Now, where things become a little bit more artificial is sort of when you're talking about the remote exploitability of this particular problem. The paper that these researchers wrote suggests the use of remote direct memory access. This essentially allows you low latency access to memory. And with this in particular with 10 gig networks again, you would be able to remotely read the arrival times of packets by essentially looking at changes in latency in the shared cache. 
But in order to use remote direct memory access, you need a network technology and you need to have access to a server that actually supports it. And that, as far as I can tell, is really sort of limited to InfiniBand. They're not saying this in their quick summary for this attack, but this is explained more detailed in the complete paper. So I'll include links to both so you can really read all the details in case you're concerned here. I don't really see this as a big threat and Intel, as far as I can tell, doesn't think so either. So don't really expect any patches or if you see them, uh, don't really prioritize these patches like maybe some of these other side channel attacks we had in the past. Well, and that's it for today. Thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.